Welcome back to the Maths Guy. I am the Maths Guy, my name is Matt. What if I said I wanted you to add 32 plus 45? But it's not just 32 and it's not just 45, it's 32.4 and 45.2. Dun, dun, dun. Oh dear, this is new. Now we are looking at decimals, a digit that comes after a decimal point and after our ones. So in my number 32.4, I still have two ones and I still have three tens, like I would do if I had just the number 32. But now I have another little part, a decimal, a fraction, a part of another number. Not quite a one, not quite making it 33, but a decimal that still needs adding. So where do we put it? Well, that's right, we're just going to add another column, but this time our columns are going to come the other way. Remember I said we don't always start with our ones? Well, here is why, because sometimes we have decimals, and decimals are even smaller than ones, so therefore we need to add those first, because they will have a smaller value. Okay, so how are we going to lay this out properly then? Well, I'm going to add the decimal point to my titles at the top of my place value. So now I've got a decimal, one, tens, and hundreds, and then the column next to the decimal point is going to come the tenth column. Okay, this is the tenths column. The next column would be the hundreds column, then the thousands, ten thousand, and so on and so on. Okay, because this column represents ten parts of one number. So in here we have four, four tenths of one. Okay, so let's put our numbers in the correct places. 32.4, I have four tenths. I'm going to put my decimal point in the correct place. I have two ones and I have three tens. In my 45.2, I have two tenths. I'm going to put my decimal point in the correct place. Five ones and four tens. And now I'm ready to begin. And what do we do? That's right, we start at our smallest value. And in this case, our tenths column is our smallest value. So let's begin. Four tenths add two tenths equals six tenths. Now, here's a really important detail. I'm going to make sure at this point I put my decimal point in. If I don't put my decimal, I could forget it and change the whole value of the number later. So it's really important I put that in now. Let's do it together. Boom. Now I'm ready to add up my ones column. I have two ones added to five ones equals seven ones. Now I can do my tens column. Three tens plus four tens is seven tens. So therefore my answer is 77.6. That point is really important. Let's imagine we forgot to put that point in there, the decimal point. Let's take it away. What's my answer now? Well, it looks a lot like 776, which is way bigger than the correct answer of 77.6. So that decimal is really, really important and something we must not ever forget. I also want to stop and have a look at something. If you see, all of our decimals are all in one perfect line. That's a clear indicator that I've set this question up correctly and I've answered it correctly. If your decimal points are in different places, that probably means you've made a mistake and you're probably going to get the wrong answer. So really make sure your decimal points are in the right place before you start. Okay, let's have a look at where stage three could go. Let's have a look at the question 33.04 add 26.1. Now I can see straight away that this is a bit different because, again, I have a different amount of digits in each question, but specifically I have a different amount of numbers after my decimal point. In 33.04 I have two digits after my decimal point, and in 26.1 I only have one digit. So it's really important that we begin to understand how to set up this question. I see so many people not understanding how to lay this out now. And it's not much harder really than everything else we've been doing. The first thing to do is to make sure we always put our titles at the top so that they, therefore we cannot make a mistake. So let's begin by putting our ones and tens. We know we have ones and tens. We also know that we have a decimal point and we have tenths. But in this question now we're going to have hundredths because we have a zero four in my 33. Good. 
Now I'm ready to put my numbers in place. Well, I always like to start with my ones. So in 33.04, I still have three ones. So I'm gonna put that in the right place, and I have three tens. I'm gonna put that in the right place. Now I'm gonna put my decimal in the right place, and then I'm gonna realize that I have zero tenths and four one hundredths. Put those into the correct place. Does my number still read 33.04? Yes, that's a good sign that I'm on the right lines. Now I'm ready to put my 26.1, and again I'm gonna start with my ones. I've got six ones, and then I'm gonna do my tens. I have two tens, and now I can look at my decimal, put the decimal point in, and see that I have one tenth. But now I have this gap again. What can I do here? That's right, put a placeholder. So I'm gonna put this placeholder. Again, it does not change the value of this number. 26.1, it was the same as saying 26.10. It's the same as saying 26.100000 forever. It doesn't change the value. Okay, so now I'm ready to begin. Again, I'm gonna start with my smallest value. In this case, it's now hundredths. So four plus zero is four. I have four hundredths. Now I'm ready to do my tenths, and I can see that I have zero tenths add one tenth that equals one tenth. Really important, I put my decimal point back. Here we go, excellent. And I can already see they're in the right line. That's a great sign. After that, I can do my ones, and I can do three ones, add six ones, equals nine ones. And then last but not least, I can do my tens. Three tens, add two tens, equals five tens. Leaving me with an answer of 59.14. Excellent. If you can do that, and if you understand that, you are an amazing year five mathematician. Okay, now I'm gonna show you as hard as this can get. The hardest stage three that we can possibly get. You ready? Let's have a look. Okay, what if I gave you the question 475.1 add 39.35? Let's analyze this and see why this is so difficult. Well, I can see we have a different amount of digits after the decimal place, in my 475.1, I only have one digit after the decimal place, whereas in my 39.35, I have two digits after the decimal place. But I also have different amounts of digits before the decimal place. In 475, I have three digits. And in 39, I have two digits before the decimal. So we're gonna need more placeholders this time. I can also see that we're gonna have to carry some of these columns. So this is as hard as stage three can get. If you can get this, you can do everything with addition in year five. Okay, let's begin. I'm gonna set up my place value chart in my column method. So I can see that I need my ones, tens, and hundreds, but I can also see I'm gonna need tenths and one hundredths after my decimal place. Now let's look at 475.1 and understand I have five ones, seven tens, four one hundredths, and a decimal point, and after the decimal, I have a one-tenth. Great, I've put that in the right place. Now I'm ready for 39.35. Well, 39 is made up of nine ones and three tens. I can put those in the right place. I can put my decimal now, and I can see they're already starting to line up. Great. And now I see I have three tenths and five one-hundredths. Awesome. But look, now I have two gaps. What could I put there? That's right, placeholders. Let's get them in. Awesome, now we're ready to start. We always start with our smallest value, so here we go. Zero, add five. We always start with our smallest value, which is now our hundredths column, and I'm gonna add zero to five, which gives me five. Now in my tenths column, I can add my one to my three, that gives me four, and now it's really important that I put my decimal in place, and I can see that they're all still in line. Give myself a big tick, I'm already getting things right. Now I get to my ones column, and I have five ones, add nine ones, equals 14 ones, or four ones and one 10. So I'm gonna carry the 10 across, and now I can see in my tens column, I have seven tens, add three tens, add one 10, equals 11 tens, or 110. So I'm gonna put my 10 in place, and I'm gonna carry my 100. And now in my hundreds column, I can see that I have a 400, add 100, which now equals 500. 
So my answer is 514.45. Whoa, that is amazing. If you have just understood that, you are a legend because you now understand everything that year five can throw at you with addition. That was all of stage three. So before we move on to subtraction, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put three questions up on the board and these are gonna be difficult. So do not worry if you get these wrong. Remember, getting things wrong is just part of the learning process. If you get them wrong, go back and watch this section again and then see where you made the mistake. Correct it and then move on. Do not move on until you've got those three questions correct. If you need a little extra help, ask an adult, but really go back and watch this section again. Okay, I'm gonna see you in another moment in subtraction. Good luck with these three questions, guys.